a very good morning to everyone uh, namaste hari krishna uh, today we welcome you all for this facebook live session on the topic can't go outside then go inside uh, the, the speaker for today uh, is a very special person a very special guest chetanya charan prabhu chetanya charan prabhu is a mentor a monk and a motivational speaker he has authored over 25 books on applied mindfulness and purposeful living he has also he is also author of 3500 daily inspirational Medi meditation on bhagavad gita he has been invited speaker at tedx world peace conference unesco intel google microsoft stanford princeton yale and many other university across the globe He has given more than 400 talks across 100 cities in four continents every year. So, Chetanya Charan Prabhu, thank you so much for uh, giving us time and uh, being with us today. It's a pleasure uh, talking to you. I have followed you over many years now as a PhD student, and uh, there was a time in my life where I was seeing you more than I see my parents. So, I always have that special feeling of connection with you. So, thank you once again. Um, We are Thank you for arranging this, and it's a pleasure for me to be here with you. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you. Uh, I also have uh, uh, with us today uh, three more guests who will be joining me and asking different questions to Chetanya Charan Prabhu. Uh, we have Aditya Garg. Uh, Aditya is a recent graduate of Doctor of Pharmacy program from University of Alberta. He is currently working on the front lines. during this pandemic caring for older patients with complex medical needs in calgary aditya welcome to the session uh next uh, we have uh, shashi uh, shashi is our techy friend from silicon valley and uh, he has been involved with the different technologies and working at forefront to uh, make technology accessible to people so shashi it will be uh, very interesting to listen to your perspective on you know the current situation we are dealing with uh, thanks for joining us today uh, we have with us uh, victoria uh, victoria is my friend from princeton sangha and she manages a nationwide school recycling program in united states her background is in environmental services and marketing so um, we all are from very different diverse backgrounds and um, it's kind of nice because uh, it gives us bandwidth to talk about more uh, diverse topics uh, and uh, with that uh, chetanya charan prabhu uh, you 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 always have been a avid world traveler and uh, i have seen your lectures you know which sometimes it becomes harder hard to follow your movement from place to place over the continent Over, over over the globe so how is how has life changed for you in this pandemic time what are how are you engaging yourself uh, what what new projects are you working on these days yeah it's been a drastic change before the virus started in the 45 days i traveled across probably 15 cities and then in the last two months i haven't gone out of the room where i have been staying so cuz i came to india and there was a lockdown so at a physical level there has been a drastic change simultaneously because of uh, the technology we have today uh, we can stay connected so i'm doing online podcasts and i'm focusing a lot on writing i think this is a time when all of us get a opportunity to rethink our priorities normally our life goes fast and <clears throat> you know there are three levels there is the immediate which we need to take care of then there is the intermediate and there is the ultimate so by immediate means okay i have to get this chore done i have to get this dead meet this deadline get this done so to some extent we are caught in the immediate most of the time and intermediate refers to some somewhat long term maybe where i want to be a year down the line two years down the line or six months down the line so we do spend some attention for that because if we are having somewhat long term projects some exams some assignments we think about them but the but the ultimate 
so that is something which we don't usually think about so i found that for me writing is something which i always wanted to do and i have written a few books but over the last 5 years as i traveled across the globe i got some more experiences insights and ideas of how to present things so right now i'm working on four new books and one one novel also i'm working on mm-hmm. that is the first time i'm writing in that genre so that way i i'm utilizing this time for writing and it's been quite enriching correct prabhu uh, indeed i for me personally um, i uh, i know it's a tough time but past 7 years i was so heavily involved with research and academic life i i have taken a pause from that life and i am trying to discover what i can contribute at a personal level what i can contribute at a social level and uh, contribute back to the community and that kind of uh, feeling uh, and the time which i have got in past few uh, few weeks um i appreciate that and um at the same time i i pray that we get out of this situation sooner sooner than later so i completely agree with you yeah thank you yes we all want the situation to resolve as quickly as possible let's say that there are two aspects you know there is acceptance and there is passivity so if we don't have acceptance then we are constantly resenting and ranting about the situation we are in so there has to be certain level of acceptance of what is but passivity is where we don't do anything about what is so mm-hmm. if we we don't have acceptance we resent if we have passivity then it is we just uh, feel sorry for ourselves and sink into ourselves so that the key line differentiating between acceptance and passivity is purposefulness i accept something that i can't change so that i can focus on the purpose that is important for me and sometimes how i'm going to pursue that purpose may change because some specific situations are obstructed by the externals correct so either we spend our time in vehemently resenting the situation we are in and that doesn't help or we just uh, uh, dejectedly cave into the situation so both of those more in you know, the bhagavad gita talks about the mode of ignorance and in tamoguna so this this reactions of resentment or passivity both of them are in the mode of ignorance and many mental health problems come up when we either can't accept what is or we just cave into what is and don't do anything about it so if you can find a channel to move forward then it is a time for being constructive thank you prabhu for that uh for that wonderful uh, sort of intro to what we'll be talking about today i just wanted to go a little bit more deeper because what i'm seeing um in work is that you know patients are asking me um you know what is the situation like um when will we have a cure when will we have a vaccine and it's so difficult i find to be able to relate the reality of the situation while still make it seem like you know things are still not all doom and gloom and when i was reflecting on this i was like maybe it's because i really myself haven't come to understand um how i can balance these two aspects out so i wanted to see you know what you make of the situation like how can we see the reality of the situation and yet remain you know hopeful not completely hopeless and you know sort of communicate that you know to um like individuals in the society where they're not completely oblivious to the reality but they're still hopeful yeah the it's going on to the same thing one is if i deny the reality i'm living in a fantasy world and i will be shocked sooner or later when the reality hits me but then i cannot be obsessed only with the reality of the things around me as are being be- depicted by the media or as i'm hearing from people around me this is where spirituality can help us because spiritual one of the basic principles of spirituality is that you know our identity extends beyond our biology our identity extends even beyond our psychology 
we have a physical side to us we have a mental side to us but we exist beyond both of this so we have a core which is which is beyond our situations and beyond our emotions and uh, usually if you consider this three level reality the body the mind and the spirit so the mind is where thoughts and emotions arise the spirit is the source of consciousness from where we process things now usually most of the anxiety comes up not at the physical level but at the mental level at the physical level there are problems but generally whatever problem is there we can do something to deal with it or to live with it but when a problem comes up our mind starts imagining what will happen in the future and that imagination is where the the thing becomes complicated now to some extent we need to visualize and prepare for the future also but the difference is if you consider the physical mental and the spiritual at the mental level it's almost like a horror movie starts inside us and then that overwhelms us so so there is there are two questions usually whenever there are problems is one problem then the mind starts asking a question what if and what if what if this happen what if that happen what if that happens and various doomsday scenarios start playing in our mind so one way to stop that is to change the question from what if to what is okay what is the situation right now what is the problem right now so what is at the at the mental level when we are getting caught in our, the worry some thoughts coming from our mind the way to deal with is to go down or go up go down means go down to the physical level of reality and ground yourselves in the physical level so for example in the yoga tradition breathing deep breathing is considered important now deep breathing has serves many purposes but just breathing deeply it makes us aware of the physical dimension in a way that is unchanging the physical world around us can keep changing but the breath is something which is constant and if you can just start focusing on the breath and maybe try to breathe slowly deeply what happens our, our we get our consciousness no longer is caught in the level of the mind and then that helps us calm down and beyond that so one way is go down the other way is go up go up means this is where processes like meditation or mantra chanting or prayer they raise our consciousness to the spiritual level where we experience a certain level of calmness where we can become observers of our situations and our emotions both so so this is the first thing once you get caught in the head caught in the mind we need to come out so what is what is at the physical level what is at the spiritual level at the spiritual level i am different from my situations i am different from my emotions and then if you consider the mind playing a horror movie this may go wrong that may go wrong that may go wrong now as i said we want to prepare for the future we don't want to be paranoid about the future but we want to prepare so the difference between preparing for the future and uh, becoming paranoid about the future is who is in control of the movie that the mind is showing is it that i am just like a passively watching what if this what if this what if this what if this or i am calmly in control and then i take the situation let the mind's movie go to the future okay if this happens what all can i do okay i can do this i can do this i can do this we need to have some kind of preparation for emergencies we may stock some supplies we may have some emergency contacts we may ourselves create some resources so we need to prepare for the future but while preparing for the future we need to first ground ourselves in the present ground ourselves in the present both physically and spiritually then look at the future and prepare for the scenarios so that way we can be realistic in terms of preparing for the situations but at the same time once we understand that the present is there with us and 
the future cannot hurt us in the present unless we let it hurt us the future can't hurt us in the present unless we start fantasizing about it and especially dystopian fantasies which drag, drag us away into into all kinds of uh, negative scared scary emotions but then ground yourself in the present and then prepare it's so actually a way, yeah. yeah sorry go ahead so you, no so that's that's what i feel that if you start from the present and then in a calm way try to visualize future scenarios then that can help us prepare for it yeah that's Is a one shashi yes uh, there's that's a wonderful segue to a question that i had for you you know talking about imagination fantasy and what not and here i am in silicon valley you know all the innovation practically begins here in silicon valley uh, lots of craziness fast talk, fast life you know talk of technology you know the biggest innovation going on right now yeah. is self self driving cars right they are all all the teslas yeah. in the bay area are right now parked in garage and they are not driving themselves <laughs> so <laughs> you know <Okay. laughs> every monday in my office you know we used to have a check in on you know what did you do over the weekend and people will have like really cool pictures to share really cool videos to share they went out side this and uh, when you are in that kind of a mental mentality that, that i have got this world i have everything and these setbacks are really hard to accept right one is really okay you know i i have i just bought this expensive car i cannot go anywhere now you know i i had this gadget that i wanted to take pictures take pictures of what now you know i'm i'm stuck in the house and uh, people were sharing about all these things uh, on a monday morning everyone would ask what did you do over the weekend so people here they don't like downtime you know we don't like downtime in internet and we don't like downtime in our own lives so it's at this point yeah. it's like a, it's like an emotional crisis that okay you know my brain is a functioning machine now it doesn't have anything to think about i cannot innovate i cannot do anything i'm just sitting in the house at this time one starts introspecting right because the brain and mind has to function they will be thinking about something they want to introspect but you know what uh, the problem the dilemma is, is we are not guided like we don't have thing on to introspect on so i was wondering if you can if you have like some practical suggestions that you know people you know you should be this is how you begin introspecting or you know these are the kind of questions that are there because we have lost that chain of thought sometimes you know we need to understand what is important to introspect on so can you please share uh, some lights on what are some practical tips to uh, you yeah. know deal with these situations okay. Uh, that's a very practical question and quite universal also although in silicon valley the pace is higher but i think all over the world the pace is fast and it's becoming faster so as i mentioned in our introspection there are two levels of reality there is the mind and then there is the spirit so to understand ourselves we can observe ourselves more carefully quite often we are so caught in the outer world you know get doing this getting that done buying this watching this so then we don't really observe ourselves sometimes we surprise ourselves or sometimes we are surprised or concerned by our own reactions say something small happens but we explode or conversely something big happens and we don't feel anything you now we may that might some catastrophe happen somewhere and we just uh, don't feel anything in our heart or any any empathy any compassion any pain for those who are suffering so now but we, we when we are too going too fast in our lives we are not emotionally aware of ourselves we are driven by our emotions to do things but we are not aware of those emotions so i like to talk about the concept of inner news just as we have outer news what's happening in which part of the world so inner news broadly means <clears throat> i like to think about if we consider our emotions it's like a pattern there are sine waves sometimes we feel good about things and sometimes we feel bad about things so one way of introspecting is to look 
at what triggered crests and troughs within us and sometimes we are doing something very enthusiastic and within a few minutes we find that our mood has gone down now what happened we might say, we just say we might say oh i am just uh, i am a moody person well maybe but still something caused that sine wave to go down go from top to bottom so from the crest to the trough so basically if you observe ourselves it might be just we are doing something and somebody passed a snide comment or somebody had said something about us long ago and we just remembered it and that remembrance becomes like a brake on our enthusiasm and our vehicle just comes to a grinding stop so then that helps us understand okay this is where i am a little emotionally vulnerable so basically if we look at ourselves to understand what puts us down into the troughs this was just going down there okay yeah i am see when i say i am feeling down i am feeling bored i am feeling depressed it's okay i am feeling depressed now what does it mean i am here and my feeling is here and i am observing my feeling so then if i observe this okay then i try to think okay what got me here we may not always be able to catch it immediately but just observing okay right now and i started feeling a little down so then we start understanding ourselves that way so similarly if we feel energized we feel enthusiastic we feel happy about certain things so at one level our own emotional ups and downs if we become more aware of those then we can prepare for those in future so for example now even the medical scenario which alte was mentioning some people if they feel very paranoid very fearful of things so the introspect what is it that you feel fearful about is it you feel fearful about abandonment and loneliness something might happen nobody would be there or is it you feel uh, about worried about impoverishment that you may not have financial support or strength or is it that you feel uh that you might be in pain and you don't know how to process the pain so basically try to find out what are what are the things that cause emotional ups and downs so it's like instead of just getting swept away by the waves try to observe what causes the waves so that's one level of introspection by which we understand our minds better another aspect of so it could also be one way to start doing this is uh, maybe once uh, once an hour or once in 3 hours just take a pause and try to articulate your thoughts or feelings okay for example i might say that i am feeling excited by this talk or i might say that oh, i am feeling uh, i am feeling bored because the same questions keep coming again and again or i am feeling nervous i don't know what question will come and i don't know whether i'll be able to answer it or not so basically what happens sometimes when the extremes are coming it is difficult to not be swept away by them but if we just before the extremes come even in normal situations just take a break and try to articulate articulate your feelings or articulate your thoughts you don't have to do it for all the past 3 hours just for the right now what 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 am i feeling right now so what happens by this two things not only do we develop a vocabulary to understand ourselves but also introspectively we start understanding that i am different from my emotions so if i can observe my emotions if i can identify my emotions then what happens there is the one thing is identifying our emotions and the other is identifying with our emotions so most of the times we start identifying with the emotion even before we have identified the emotion that means even before i realize if i notice i am getting angry now then maybe i could put a break on it and ensure that i don't speak something that i would that makes things worse or that i would regret but if i can't identify that then what happens i start identifying with it i get angry and i get swept away so trying to articulate our emotions on a regular basis maybe every few hours 
or maybe at the end of the day just look at you know at that time look at what were the major crescent troughs i went through so that way we can start the process of introspection or at a bigger level so we could look at our life and look at what are the things what were the crescent troughs in our life in the last one week or last one month or last one year and then what happens by that okay this this is what i was so excited about at that time but now i don't feel it that important or sometimes i find it this was so important but i was so emotionally unengaged at that time sometimes you know we may be having a very important discussion with someone but we are distracted at that time and then afterward we realize hey what did you say there's something very important so basically we learn to identify our emotions before we identify with our emotions and this can also help us in our spiritual growth because as soon as i start to understand i am identifying my emotion that means i understand that i am different from that and then when the emotion starts coming it is easier to stay uh, uh, to distance ourselves from it and not be swept away by it and sometimes all this inner identification we don't do because we are too caught in outer things either doing outer things or watching what other uh, what outer things others are doing so unfortunately what i found is for many people instead of the, phys- the the physical lockdown instead of leading them inward instead of leading them to inner exploration it is actually leading to more of digital exploration which is not you can learn a lot on online that's fine but if that if that becomes a substitute for not looking inward then we are losing this opportunity so the digital is helpful and we are you know, it would have been difficult for us to sustain the physical lockdown without digital connections but there can be digital connection and there can be digital distraction also mm-hmm. so the point is we sometimes use the outer world to run away from the inner world mm-hmm. and introspection is when we stop that running away and start l- confronting ourselves start learning more about ourselves does it make sense yes prabhu wonderful thank you so much um i have some follow up questions as well to that but um, you know i'll 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 go after victoria <laughs> asked a question because lady is going um yes thank you so much prabhu for explaining you know that we should stay separate from our emotions and uh really uh place an importance on introspection during this time and the difference between outer news and inner news and i'm one of those people who actually is looking into the outer news and actually one of the things that i've been noticing is that there is um almost an unintended benefit from this experience uh, from ecological so uh for people aren't going out as much due to the stay at home orders and therefore the uh, the the emissions the human emissions have decreased and the air quality is better in many places such as delhi new york and la at the same time uh, many wild animals that were displaced because of human involvement have been reentering their natural habitats um at and at the same time people are tapping into diy culture a little bit more maybe we're cooking more than we usually do or we're trying to garden and do things for ourselves that we would normally you know go out and and get on our own so we're we're able to to get things that we need at home instead of going outside um not just you know on an inward scale but also like if you think about the tangible needs that we need to take care of our body and and of the earth so i have a question for you based on this is this um uh, a sign from from mother earth it, is she trying to tell us something that this simple living that we are engaging in is this something that we can hear heal ourselves and the earth is it um you know giving us a sign that this is actually there could be a benefit from this oh yes no, definitely situations uh, can be understood at different levels based on the frame of reference say for example if suddenly uh, in this while the stock is going on suddenly say my sound goes off oh it could be that maybe my internet has gone down or maybe i pressed uh, the my mic came out or maybe your 
uh, your speaker went off for the same event there could be different explanations so now when we want to find out which is the explanation that is most suitable so which is the most suitable most constructive most actionable so now at one level we have the corona crisis and it is because people have traveled and people there has been human to person to person transmission so and we are trying to avoid that so that is one level so just like a, uh, we, if the light goes off one level is maybe they switch off the bulb uh, switch, switch it off accidentally or is it power has gone off over here or is it that you know the power plant itself has collapsed so like that you could place things in different contexts so one immediate context is yes we want it's because of the infection and we want to avoid the infection but we also need we humans actually have this unique capacity to place things in various contexts and uh, certainly the environmental context is a vital context to consider because over the last few centuries almost you now we have lived as if we are the only species that matters on the earth there are many sci-fi movies about say aliens extraterrestrial life coming to the earth but the center of the earth center of the whole idea is that you know, they come and interact with us humans so it's like we are the most important species on this earth like we are all that matters but now we have the point that you now viruses are so tiny that even bacteria can't see them and we can't see bacteria so and practically all the viruses that are there on the earth which are probably there this corona virus that's there on the earth if we put all of them together all that are infecting everyone they would probably be not more than 1 gram so 1 gram of virus has brought the whole planet to a standstill so you know the we don't we can't have an an entitlement mental entitlement mentality towards the earth that this earth is just for us so there is a, we need to live in harmony with nature and consider the consequences of uh, our actions uh, environmental activism over the last maybe two de- decades and especially the last decade has become quite uh, uh, quite prominent in the in the media and in the world and that's a very healthy sign and certainly the one aspect of environmental activism that is not thought about and that that is not talked about so much even the uh, algorithm is inconvenient truth found one truth too inconvenient to talk about and that was the role of our diet of what we eat so the current virus has come to us through zoonosis the transfer of uh, germs from animals to humans and this is where almost 63% of diseases that have infected humanity in the last decade they have come through through uh, meat consumption the animal food so maybe that is something which is within each one of us to do because if we talk about environmental pollution then how much can we control that how much can we at an individual level get factories to stop uh, sending effluents into the rivers how much can we stop uh, using cars or automobiles or oh, there are many things which need to be done for fixing the environment and of course you are doing something to educate students and uh, to make sure that schools are green that's very good but beyond what we can do at a big macro level at a micro level if we could even not if can't stop even decrease the consumption of meat and that could help in fact um, i did some uh, analysis and even i was shocked that 150 billion animals are killed every year it is meat has always been a part of human society but 150 billion means 
it's like the entire population of the earth is annihilated every 18 days every 18 days and this 150 billion doesn't even include the fish but it's only the land animals so and fish the estimate is anywhere between 50 billion to 140 billion separately because fish when they are fish they are not counted in terms of numbers they are counted in terms of kilograms weight so we don't know how much so in terms of the scale in terms of the brutality and in terms of the dangerousness there has been never uh, this kind of meat consumption ever before so even if somebody says oh meat is a natural part of my diet i can't give it up okay but even our ancestors never ate meat at the at the scale that we are eating if you consider biologically we have canine teeth but our canine teeth are not like a lions or a tiger's canine teeth and all our teeth are not canine that indicates that if at all meat is to be a part of our diet it's a small part so one way we could be so nature as our environment or the earth you know maybe by by sending these diseases to us through a particular channel is teaching us that maybe this is uh, this is a channel which we shouldn't be exploiting Correct. this is not the first disease earlier we had swine flu mm -hmm. and we had mad cow disease so it's not a as it's, a, it's not a particularly convenient truth because yeah. what happens in other forms of environmental activism it's easy to blame the big corporate companies whereas so there is a lot of possibility for moral posturing mm -hmm. but here it's a possibility for practical action so at one level it seems a little intrusive or you want me to change my lifestyle but on the level it's also empowering each one of us can make a difference correct prabhu uh, in fact i mean i i completely agree with agree uh, with you on this that um, this this pause has given all of us this time to sit back and think and if we don't contribute and uh, in our part i don't think that bigger change which uh, we have been talking about i feel that's all just theoretical you know unless we show it in our actions and you know sh i want to like shift little bit gears from here because i want to share a personal feeling um uh, this is first time in my life um i have a feeling of insecurity because and this feeling is very similar to when i see videos of migrant travelers in india who are going back to their homes it's a very similar feeling which i have because i am an immigrant in us and today uh, we are facing this kind of a situation where i don't know whether i will be i will have a job tomorrow or not whether my parents will be safe back home whether my friends and uh, people who are close to me they they uh, they are good in their health so this insecurity has taken over so much that it it creates a feeling of anxiety and it's very hard i i i have all compassion for people who are you know dealing with this tough situation back home and even here all the students in us are suffering right now so where this insecurity comes from and how can we work in a practical way to overcome this feeling of anxiety by focusing on our inner news which you talked about yeah first thing is uh, it is it is a disconcerting time that we are in and insecurity or fear they are not intrinsically undesirable nature has given us fear as a as a gift as a alert alerter of danger the so in that sense it's vital that animals couldn't survive in the wilderness if they didn't have that sensation of fear the problem for us is in today's world our sources of fear have become amorphous if for a deer as soon as he sees a tiger oh there's a tiger let me run from it so it's a very tangible source of fear and there's a tangible action that you can do about it but in our world the source of fear is amorphous okay 
it's it's not one actionable thing okay, if i lose my job okay that's one thing but then it's not one thing which i can point out to and i can move away from it if the economy goes down so quite often the fears are amorphous that's why they are not so easily actionable and then what happens we we can't if you can't identify the fear we can't do any action about it and then we stay in a constant state of fear fear in the presence of danger presence of actionable danger is healthy but fear when it is when it is not connected with any actionable danger then it degenerates to fearfulness where i am constantly fearful and that becomes problematic because then that drains us the fear is at one level a state of high emotional and physical energy the hormones start getting activated so that we can fight or fight fight or flight or whatever we do so we can't stay at that level constantly so i talk about broadly four principles by which we can make the fear reduce it to something actionable so we talk about this f e a r so f is focus focus means uh, what is the exact problem right now this is actually related to what i discussed with aitya about what is as compared to what if so basically if we consider a three level reality there is the there is the spirit the consciousness there is the mind and there is the uh, physical reality so now we interact with the physical reality in two ways one is we take in information from outside and then we act on the outside act on the outer situation so what we are doing is by focus we we focus our vision on something particular what is the exact problem right now and sometimes we may have to ask that question two three times to ourselves what is the exact problem right now oh what if my parents they they fall sick or they get some trouble okay what is the exact problem right now well you know i am here and they are there what is the exact problem right now well i haven't contacted them and i don't know how they are okay then you got to something so what happens is you try to get the problem down to something specific so i don't know how they are then that brings us to c e is engage then what can i do about it right now mm -hmm. what can i do about it right now engage or oh, then let me give them a call or let me give my neighbor a call so they are asking them to keep a watch on my parents or whatever so as soon as we we start doing something then the grip of the mind on us the grip of our captivation with the mind's horror movie that stops so focus and engage so going back to the earlier point i said to get out of the mind either go down to the body or go up to the spirit correct so focus and engage they get us down to the body mm -hmm. get out on the physical level what is the exact problem right now what can i do about it right now and then after that a and r is arise arise means raise your consciousness above the mind to the spiritual level and the, the, especially this is easily possible if we have some regular practice of meditation or prayer or mantra chanting then these act as elevators for our consciousness so by regularly doing this then we can we can do it and we can find our consciousness rising upward that's arise and when you do this it's like uh, if you're caught in a stormy situation if you are in a ocean and the boat is being tossed here and there you feel very vulnerable but if a helicopter comes and picks us up then mm -hmm. the storm is there the waves are there but we don't feel personally threatened so it's like that if you can raise our consciousness upward then that helps us calm down and then we can be concerned but without feeling threatened and then the last is r r is release release means we say okay you know i i did this i thought about this i raised myself but then there are so many things that are that are not in my control so many things are going wrong well 
the, that which is not in your control let go of that we often think of letting go as passivity as passivity but actually letting or let, letting go as defeat or weakness but actually it is strength you know the what happens is the more we hold on to the things that are not in our control the more our thoughts go out of control a the, and then that makes me wild with anxiety mm. on the other hand so when we are letting go of the things that are not in our control what are we doing instead we are trying to catch hold of our thoughts let me focus okay that is not that what if something happens in india well if you are in america that's not in my control then what happens but then what can i do so f e a r is cyclic also the more to when i release then i can focus better okay Hello. that i let go so that i can focus on what i can better so by this focus engage arise and release if you do this thought exercise it is possible to at least get a grip on our fear mm-hmm. we can't get rid of the fear but we can ensure that the fear doesn't take control of us and the fear doesn't overwhelm us Correct. so uh, prabhu uh, just for everyone uh, we are entering into the last 15 minutes of the discussion uh, and i would also like to take some question from online because we have lot of viewers who are watching it so uh, maybe shashi and then aditya victoria if you have uh, some specific question and then we uh, we move to some audience questions uh, sounds good um, so my question was you know prabhu you gave a very good advice on you know how to understand the fear but, but there are some positive engagements that you can do right like we cannot keep it at neutral what are some practical meditation tips that you you might um uh you know tell our, us and our viewers that you know practically you know these are the things you could be focusing on you know this is how uh, you can uplift yourself you know when you're in a lockdown you're you're staying at home what are some practical things one could do to you know in order to you know uh, get through this time okay yeah so usually i talk of this as 4s a four so we could put it this way that if a wave is coming and sweeping us if we can hold on to an anchor then that anchor gives us strength so the waves hit but they don't waves and sweep us away so there are four ways we can there's a wave behind is there anchor also <laughs> oh okay you got anchor there good so is four as r you could take it in english or in sanskrit both it is first is spiritual knowledge or we can in sanskrit we call it swadhyay so we need to study maybe read wisdom texts like the bhagavad gita and get a bigger picture of reality so spirituality can just be some hazy feel good kind of thing or spirituality can be a journey with a map for us so just like we talked about going inwards well what is there inward how do i go inward so that what is the inner topography so that we understand by studying wisdom texts like the bhagavad gita so study is very helpful for us not only to go inward but also to anchor ourselves because we are intellectually reminded of our of a higher reality and that intellect become a basis for connection the second s is sadhana sadhana is our spiritual practice so it could be in in our tradition we chant mantras we chant the hari krishna mantra and there are different practices based on one's own tradition the important thing is we practice something that tangibly helps us raise our consciousness so the now sound is extremely powerful we are among all our senses what we are most conscious of is eyes and sound some people have sharp olfactory sense and some people are connoisseurs of food but if you see movies the primary way they get us into captivated is through sight and sound so now our eyes usually get us caught at the material level 
साउंड इज वेरी पॉवरफुल फॉर रेजिंग अस टू द स्पिरिचुअल लेवल इन फैक्ट द भगवद गीता इज दिस जर्नी फ्रॉम साइट टू साउंड अर्जुन केम टू फाइट अ वॉर ही सॉ ही सॉ ऑल दीज आर माई रिलेटिव हाउ कैन ए फाइट सो दैट साइट पुट हिम इन टू इल्यूजन बट साउंड हियरिंग द विजडम ऑफ द गीता elevated him it gave him confidence back again so sound is very powerful and mantra chanting is also sometimes called as sonic meditation so we use sound as a tool for raising our consciousness mantra is a special empowered sounds so keeping some time for prayerfully uh, reciting some mantras and practicing some meditation thereby is a way to elevate our consciousness to gain an anchor for ourselves and third is sangha sangha is spiritual association who we associate with shapes our thoughts our emotions our intentions and ultimately our life and we do have we do have various kinds of friends colleagues and we function for functional purposes we do need to associate with them but there is some association which can nourish us they said there are two kinds of people some people bring happiness wherever they go and some people bring happiness whenever they go <laughs> so <laughs> wherever they go and whenever they go so you know we if we have some association that uplifts us that reminds us of our of life spiritual side so then that association can also act as anchor for us because sometimes just processing things inside our own head becomes difficult i may intellectually analyze i may try to distance myself but it's not always possible our association matters a lot for us so the now here spiritual association doesn't necessarily mean physical proximity it essentially means uh, it it means similarity of aspirations what is it that i value in my life what is it that we seek in the long run so similarity of aspirations so if we have some spiritually minded people with whom we can associate on a regular basis that helps a lot and the last is seva bhav or service attitude service attitude means a simple a simple understanding of a difference between a spiritual consciousness and a materialistic consciousness is that whenever i meet someone if the first question that comes in my mind is what can this person do for me then that is material consciousness but if the first question in my mind is what can i do for this person then that is spiritual consciousness now what happens why is service attitude important a service attitude doesn't mean that we let others walk over us or just use and abuse us it simply means that we begin with the platform of what is in our control so in every situation if i have a service attitude then i am not so tied down with expectations about what should happen or what others will do if i understand that okay what can i do in this situation and if we understand from a broader spiritual perspective i earlier talked about release also you now the gita also states that the universe ultimately moves purposefully that even when there is chaos happening at our level of perception there is an overarching divinity which brings order out of the chaos now for that order to emerge from the chaos we need to be positively purposeful so service attitude means okay how can i serve how can i contribute in this situation and that can be a very empowering meditation so it could be one of the easiest ways to get out of depression is to think of what you can do for someone else you know, just thinking about someone else it helps and that way if we have some people with whom we connect and we try to assist them we get out of our head so broadly these four practices you know spiritual study swadhyay sadhana spiritual uh, spiritual practices then seva spiritual so sangha spiritual association and seva bhav service attitude if we cultivate these four things then what i said earlier about fear f e a r applying this will become easier because we will have that inner strength to do these things
Does that make sense? Sushi? Yes, yes, bro. Thank you very much. Abu, I had a follow up question. Yeah. You were talking about, um, you know, spiritual knowledge, uh, studying the principles of the Bhagavad Gita. In addition to Victoria's question previously, like you mentioned about, you know, how this, um, ra- like almost radical meat consumption, you know, it's excessive meat consumption may have put us in this situation. Bhagavad Gita also co- mentions this concept of karma. So how do we, you know, and so is this a correct understanding that whatever is happening today is really just karma, right? But then at the same time, if we start to target individuals like that, that, that makes us very insensitive as well. So how do you reconcile those two? Mm-hmm. That's true. Mm-hmm. Karma is an important analytical principle to help us make sense of the world overall. If you look at, but if you look at the the epics, the Mahabharata, the Ramayana, or the Bhagavatam, you won't find any single situation where someone is suffering and someone else comes and tells them, "This is your karma." So. in the tradition there are two concepts which need to be carefully understood there is karma and there is dharma karma is the cause effect principle by which our actions produce certain reactions dharma is our duty so what a, we need to focus when we are interacting with people our focus should be not on what is whose karma but on what is my dharma what can i do in this situation so a simple example to illustrate this say so suppose uh, now you are in a, a you are in the pharmacy field suppose there is a, you know, a pa- patient who comes and the patient is having severe li- liver problems because of excessive alcohol consumption and the patient had earlier similar incidents and you and the medical care staff had warned him I don't if you if you consume again it can be lethal for you now suppose uh, there's a doctor who sees such a patient and then doctor starts saying you fool i told you don't drink you're drunk now suffer i won't treat you no if a patient is suffering the first duty of the doctor is to treat first treat then teach the doctor is not meant to give a sermon at that time now of course the doctor also needs to make the patient aware of what caused this and what can be done to minimize or prevent it so at a appropriate point we can talk about the principle of karma also but first we need to begin with the principle of dharma principle of dharma means what is my duty in this situation and our duty should always be to help others it is not to it is not to teach others sometimes teaching can be a part of helping but karma is also very complex it is that when we talk about the in principle actions lead to reactions that is the basic principle of karma but then you know an action leads to reaction this is such a simple point but krishna in the bhagavad gita also says gahana karmano gati gahana karmano gati means the movements of karma are very difficult to understand so it could be that sometimes when we face some trouble or somebody faces some trouble it is often a result of some present action they have done as well as some past actions they have done so it could be a unpredictable combination of the two and that's why when we talk about karma it is it karma is very rarely used for the purpose of post mortem in the tradition karma is used more for the purpose of prognosis and prevention post mortem means oh, you are suffering that's why you must have done this no oh, that would make people heartless mm-hmm. that is never done if you see for example if a if a mother has a baby who is crying should the mother think oh the baby is crying because of her past karma Oh, that would be a atrocity on the the travesty of motherhood 
No, the mother is concerned. How can I take care of the baby? So karma can never be used as a pat explanation to dismiss away the reality and the gravity of people's sufferings. But this, uh, so we definitely, definitely empathize. And while empathizing in a reasonable and intelligible way, we can also point to the principle of cause-effect connections and say. Uh, so when we are talking about meat eating as a cause, again, it's not that you know you might have a neighbor uh, who is maybe an 80 year old lady who is nice and sweet and gentle, but she eats meat. We are not blaming her. We are talking about when I talk about it. What is our target? We are talking about the industrialization of the meat uh, of the meat business, which has led to unprecedented levels of suffering. So we we are not. Uh, so the purpose of karma is never to blame a particular person. It is basically to help us choose better for the future. If in the present there is suffering, we need to help in whatever way we can. Does that address the question? It's a very important question. and it is often something which makes makes people quite uh, quite insensitive mm -hmm. yeah and that's why i wanted to bring it up because when if somebody reads the gita it can make someone very oh yes this is your karma this is why you're in the hospital very insensitive right but you know, as you said in the gita just to, to address this in the gita krishna doesn't use the karma in that sense at all now if you see we may have a certain understanding of the gita but uh, krishna doesn't tell arjuna that you suffer all this in the past because it was your karma mm -hmm. that you suffer the pandava suffered various atrocities there is no statement that your suffering was because of your karma or he doesn't even say that you know it is the karma of all these people who are that, that they are meant to die but basically he says that you have to stab you have to do your dharma and these people are disrupting the law and that's why you have to neutralize them so karma is often we have a super simplistic understanding of karma whereas the gita's understanding is much more nuanced thank you very much prabhu for that prabhu i will just take uh, one or two questions online and then we will go towards the closing of the session yeah. um there is a, a question from um chandrakant reddy he is asking um how do i teach myself to access and know what i should do as my dharma and what i shouldn't so basically he wants to know uh, what is one's dharma and how can we have uh, the uh, more uh, in depth understanding of what we should do and what not okay so dharma is first of all at one level very easy to understand at one level very difficult to understand dharma at one level means that we are all in a particular situation in our lives and there are certain responsibilities expected from us so we do those so we may be students we may be family people we may be professionals we may be citizens of a particular country so we all have our particular uh, roles to play the basic principle in dharma is that we understand that we are parts of of wholes that are bigger than ourselves those wholes could be our family could be our community could be our nation could be humanity itself could be the planet earth so we are parts of a whole bigger than ourselves and we often take from that whole without even noticing that we are taking so if we are taking something we need to be giving something to the whole so the basic principle of dharma is that we play our part in contributing to the whole that is sustaining us that in which we are participating so it's like if i am driving on a road then my dharma would be that i have to drive on the right side of the road mm -hmm. i am participating in the road transport system and it's something which bigger than me so i need to play my part in the whole now expanding this to the spiritual level there is there is ultimate reality and we are all part of the ultimate reality so all our various dharmas we could be have family dharma we could have professional dharma we could have national dharma all these are subsets of our of our dharma to the ultimate reality so that is where service attitude or seva bhav comes in so at one level we just consider what holes am i a part of and how i am meant to contribute over there that's that's one understanding of dharma now another understanding is 
that each of us is has been endowed in with particular things and we can contribute in our own unique ways so in the bhagavad gita it says guna karma vibhagashah guna and karma is qualities and activities or in contemporary language we could call that as comfort and competence mm -hmm. that means if i what am i meant to do what am i meant to contribute in my life so we can look at these two things we do various things in our lives but what is it that we are good at and what do we feel good doing so what do, what are we good, good doing means that's competence what we do feel good doing means that we are comfortable about it so our comfort and competence they can point to our distinctive endowments and then that can help us discern what could be our dharma so while doing whatever we are doing in a responsible way in a mood of service and contribution we also learn to observe ourselves and find out how best we can contribute and in many ways if we adopt practices like meditation service attitude in the bhagavad gita krishna says that uh, it is it is said that if we connect with the divine if we connect with krishna with a service attitude then that gives us inner clarity so we can understand ourselves better so basically through by doing our part in the whole responsibly and observing ourselves to understand what we are competent comfortable at we can learn what could be our optimal the optimum dharma Cool. Uh, thank you so much, Prabhu, for elaborately explaining on that point. Uh, you know, we are well short on time. I just wanted to get some closing thoughts and summary of uh, you know so many things that we spoke on and some takeaways uh, for our viewers and for us uh, that you would you know want to mention. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, maybe the takeaways you can tell me what you what you are taking away. that will be a better summary then <laughs> that's a, that's a that's a quiz if if uh quiz shashi ah <laughs> uh, yes i mean um, it was wonderful to hear about you know how um, how we are separate from our uh, you know the mind is separate from us then you know introspecting on that map um a situation could be used for one's own good and you know one of the major points that i find very relevant for myself is uh, you know while we are disconnecting with the world you know the internet could be or you know these gadgets could be another sort of distraction that is keeping us away from the reality and uh, from introspecting so maybe you know we should be uh, we should put some focus on you know moving away from gadgets taking down time and actually introspecting writing down our thoughts what we are thinking at particular times and then the practical tips of uh, you know what we should be meditating on that's the million dollar question you know people have so many vague thoughts of meditation so you went straight to the point and you know explain uh, what should we be meditating on the ways we should be meditating on and then explaining on the uh, intricacies of karma i know it's uh, big uh chapter on itself but you know explaining that in a uh, very uh, concise way was appreciated um yes yeah, so you. those are the kind of takeaways that i have and um, you know we are very grateful that uh, you took a time off of your schedule to help us out here happy and, to your uh, service thank you for organizing this maybe everyone else can also give one me one one point of what you are taking home victoria Yes. Yeah. So, like Shashi, I feel like I got so much from this session. Um, I really loved how you spoke, how you answered my question about how we like to put, um, you know, different situations in different buckets, and how we um, can look at this situation from an environmental perspective. And you specifically mentioned uh, meat eating and how it can be destructive to the environment. So, I, I really appreciated that point. um so that's what i liked aditya yeah, yeah. Uh, um i base i really liked the fear the f e a r mm -hmm. principle i think i'm really going to especially the f and the e the focus and the engage i'm really going to try to because we get these bouts of anxieties in our patients you know when we're speaking to them and so just help them walk through their emotions 
you know, just help them observe and just help them walk through their emotions. And so, you know, to empower them so that they can uh, deal with their emotions um, better. So that's really what I'm taking away because it's so difficult with everything else going on, on how to manage patients' emotional health as well. So thank you so much. That was really, that's really what I'm taking away from this. Thank you. I'm happy. You're on the field, so I'm happy to be of some service to you. <laughs> so Prabhu, for me, I think the four S principle, uh, the spiritual knowledge, which, uh, which you have shared with us today, uh, the spiritual practice, which I think I have to do, and the, uh, the Sangha, the, this is what the Sangha is, the spiritual association, and the service bhav, because I feel during this current situation of pandemic, that service bhav has to be there. And I, I, we have been reading how ISKCON has been doing great amount of service among people. And um, there have been so many activities at social level as well. So uh, with that, for me, those four S, I think, are the building blocks for a stronger foundation and also keep myself away from the anxiety which I talked about. So um, uh, that's that's what I'm taking away from today's session. And uh, thank you so much once again, uh, Chidana Charan Prabhu and uh, uh, Aditya, Victoria and Shashi for uh, taking out time and joining us today. I think it was a wonderful session. Uh, Prabhu, just one, one uh, quick comment. I am getting messages from my friends who are studying like uh, PhD students who are studying at Princeton, uh, Harvard and they, they, they message me, is it possible for them to also arrange a similar session with you? And they can also come and have such kind of uh, some, some topic of their interest. Yeah, I'll be happy to do that. We can work out the schedule. Maybe we can call on that, but I'll be happy to do that, definitely. Thank you so much, Prabhu. And uh, stay tuned. We will come Wonderful up. Wonderful being with all of you. Thank you. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank, Thank you so much. You. Yeah. Thank you.